mail servers, most specifically Postfix. So the Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, or SMTP, was published as RFC 788 in late 1981 by John Postal, who is considered the god of the internet. John Postal produced many, many different standards. Uh, lots of different RFCs have his name on them, especially the early ones. Um, he disappeared toward the end um, because he died. But um, he was one of the founding inspirational members of the creation of the internet. So this SMTP protocol uses plain text commands to communicate with remote servers listening on TCP port 25. You also have webmail and application client programs that send mail. And what happens with those is you have this, this front end, but you still have a mail server in the back end. So this local mail server that handles all the communication with the remote servers, it sends and receives them. And then use the webmail or application clients to retrieve it from the server and send it to the server. There are many different directories involved with these mail servers. The etc postfix directory contains all the configuration configuration information for the postfix server. You have the var spool mail directory, and that one contains all the email that has been received and processed and put into users files. So there's, there's an inbox style file. Basically just lists all the email messages one after another in one long text file. So you can go there and grab the mail messages for each of the users. And then there is these var spool postfix directory. And that's where postfix stores data. It's using as it's acting as a server, all the incoming mail, outgoing mail, it stores in different folders. There are lots of things in the protocol, um, such as the ability to retry sending mail when the server's down and other things like that. And so it has to maintain and hold things that are still on their outbound direction. Also inbound is processing and looking at things. The var log mail log a file is a log that can be used to troubleshoot email related problems. All kinds of things show up in there about the mail server and mail messages coming in and out. There are some SMTP security concerns. First of all, plain text messages can be viewed in transit. So if you are sending or receiving mail, anybody along the way between the source and the destination could look at the mail and read it. Now, that doesn't mean you can't encrypt your message inside of your mail, but the header data would still be unencrypted. So you have to keep that in mind. All of the messages are plain text. If the message itself is encrypted, that doesn't mean the headers are encrypted. Anyone can send unsolicited messages at a very low cost. So spam is very cheap. You can send all kinds of mail. Um, you can claim to be anybody you want. There are a lot of different changes in how mail servers are handling this. And so they can look at things and say, well, you're claiming to be from one server, but you're actually sending it from a different server. And then they can mark you as spam. And there are other things they can do to try to filter things out. Also, the protocol allows for things like relays, which make it easier to spoof sources. So you can send mail messages through a server. Most mail servers now are configured by default to not allow relaying, but relaying is still possible and it can still be turned on. The messages themselves can carry malicious files or content. You got things all the way way back to the I Love You virus that was hitting people's machines and then being processed locally and causing all kinds of problems to more malicious, more recent malicious things. Um, you can have all kinds of tricky messages. You can have messages um, telling you about a Nigerian prince or selling you things, um, claiming to be somebody they're not. And yeah, those are bad. And rejected messages can be used to perform directory harvesting attacks. They can just send email messages to everybody in your system and then decide which messages get bounced and which ones don't. And the ones that get bounced probably mean there's nobody there. 
the ones that don't get bounced, well, they probably mean there's somebody, somebody is there. So you can use that to find who's on the system and then use that information to then try to log into their account by guessing passwords and things like that. So some of the useful packages, um, Postfix is the SMTP mail server. You have other things that are related. Uh, Dovecot, which we will not talk about much, um, does provide your POP and IMAP servers. So Dovecot's a nice thing to look at. Telnet, Telnet is a great terminal emulation program that allows you to connect to ports and you can use it to Telnet to your local host port 25 if you want to walk through the mail protocol and try to figure out what's going wrong. Alpine is a great email client. Um, it comes from, well, it's based off of uh, Pine, which was based off of Pico, and Nano is based off of Pico. So you get this kind of um, thing happening here. I mean, Alpine is a great text base uh, email client, and you can use it, but you have to first install the ePEL libraries. So if you don't have the ePEL dash release package, you'll need to get that in there and then get Alpine. Postfix is available and running on default CentOS Linux 7 machines, but it is only listening locally. So it's receiving local host type email messages. And some of the services use mail as a way to communicate with the administrator. So uh, one example would be the cron process. Whenever there's a cron job that produces output, it will send an email message to the user, user root, indicating what the output of the command was. So normally you write cron jobs that have no output unless there's an error, and then they produce output and it gets emailed to the administrator. But if you wanted to do more than just listen locally, you need to make some configuration changes. So in order to configure Postfix to allow external con connections, you need to edit the etc postfix main.cf file and allow listening on all interfaces. So you can scroll down a little ways through that file until you find a section with four lines. The top line would be the inet interfaces equals all, which will be commented out. You need to uncomment that one. And you want to take the one that says inet interfaces equals local, and you want to comment that one. Now, when you uncomment it, make sure you just remove the hash mark. Don't remove it and leave a space there or something like that, because then it won't work. So make sure you do it correctly. And then, once again, you have to restart your service. So if you want to restart your service, you can use the systemctl command. So systemctl start postfix.service. You can do systemctl with a start, stop, restart, status to start, stop, and restart or get the status of your service. You can also make sure it starts on boot time with the enable or make it not start on boot time with disable. Now you don't need to worry about enable and disable because it should be running already by default once again, because it comes pre-configured that way. In order to receive mail, the mail server must be obviously listening, but it also needs to be allowed to receive communications to TC port 25 from outside machines. So in order to allow inbound TCP25, you can use the following command. Just use the firewall dash CMD space dash dash add dash service equals SMTP, which will allow the SMTP protocol to come through. Well, allow port 25 to come through. You can then verify the services are present in the firewall as well with the firewall dash CMD dash dash list dash all command. And once again, if you want to allow your service to be there after a restart of your firewall, you'd want to add the dash dash permanent option to the top command so that it, it gets stored into the firewall configuration files. So when it boots up, it will automatically add it there. One more thing to think about, um, external email service identification. So Postfix and other email servers follow standard protocols which is nice, but it's also kind of confusing sometimes. In order to send email, the Postfix server uses the host domain part of the email address to identify the server. 
So if it's a bob at example.com, it's going to check first for a DNS record for the, well, an MX record for example.com. If it does not find it, it will check for an A record in the DNS service. And so it looks for example.com and if it finds an MX record, it will use that. If it doesn't, it will use the A record. And if it doesn't find that, it will not send the mail. So it does not use the ETC host file. So don't try to make that work. It just doesn't work. It refuses to do that. So you wanna make sure you can use your DNS service, which means you have to have it configured. Troubleshooting. So if you are having trouble sending mail or receiving mail, you wanna verify your IP address is correct. You wanna verify the services are running. You have your mails are running and up and going. You wanna verify the firewall is not in the way. You wanna verify that DNS records are there so that it knows which server to uh, identify and use. You wanna make sure the remote host is up and you can ping it to do that. You also wanna verify that the remote ports are open so you can use Nmap to scan the machine, make sure port 25 is open. Um, you wanna make sure you can check logs. So you can go in that var log, mail log and take a look at that. You can also check the mail directory and see if mail is being received. So here are a couple of things, and that is our mail server or postfix mail server overview.